Greetings sailors and welcome to what is kind of a look at the Petra Pavlovsk, but also kind of not really. I'm more or less just using this as a background replay, but it is relevant to what I want to talk about, which is the change in policy that you might have heard of elsewhere about the testing process and the ability to show work in progress ships. Because for a while now, it's been pretty damn lenient. Basically, as soon as the CCs get their hands on testing ships such as this, oh, for tech tree ships anyway, the process is a little different for premiums, um, we've been able to show them off, stream them, make videos about them, and basically wargaming, to give you the TLDR version, is... Uh, unhappy about the amount of focus that they get versus existing stuff in the game because they don't want the entirety of everyone's focus just to be on stuff that isn't even finished yet and I personally am okay with this I, I mean for premiums I don't think anything's going to change there's still going to be the embargo date for uh, premium ships and essentially what they want to do with after the current round of uh, ships that we're testing the non-premium ships is to essentially do the same thing is to go back to how it used to be with uh, embargo dates for things so you're still going to see some kind of early access content as it were but it's going to be for much more finalised versions of the ships. Now, as I've said, I have absolutely no problem with this, but definitely one of the reasons why I have no problem with this is this is pretty much what I was doing already. This is actually unusual for me, showing a replay of a ship in its um, first test iteration as we have it on the live server. Obviously, it's been through on the, uh, the super test server for uh, whoever knows how long as well. But generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, I have tended to only look at previews of uh, certainly tech tree ships and most often uh, premium ships as well. The only recent counter example I can think of is that California replay that I fished out, which of course we don't know when that's coming out. Uh, you know, that, that, that was not certainly uh, going to be anything like the, uh, the the final version. I hope it could be, I don't know, but I'm hoping not. But with cases like that, yeah, I mean, that's actually a really good example of what Wargaming's talking about, even though it is a, a premium ship specifically in that circumstance, because these kinds of first impressions really do count, they really do matter. These kind of reputations will outlast any subsequent changes or at least the subsequent changes will take a really long time to actually affect that initial reputation. A really good example is the Izumo which for a long time was regarded as a rather weak tier 9 battleship and possibly in some people's eyes still has that kind of reputation and quite aside from the awkwardness of the turret arrangement. Um, the armour wasn't nearly as good when it first came out. The guns, of course, have been improved a bit. And, uh, of course, there's been stuff like the global buff to Hurrit uh, tip points. <laughs> well, that's going to be demonetised for sure now. The turret hit points. Well, that was... Um, that was an awkward spoonerism. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, you know, obviously that affected all ships, but it particularly uh, was noticeable on the Izumo because that was one that was badly affected by torrent... Uh, I'm trying to do it again. Torrent knockouts. <laughs> oh, Copran, okay, it's one of those days. It's one of those days. So I can absolutely see Wargaming's point of view. I can absolutely see the point of it, and I am absolutely fine with it. But that's not to say it is necessarily something that is a hundred percent a good thing per se it's definitely a little bit of a mixed bag because there are also plenty of examples where especially with 
ships that didn't have any kind of major um, changes between versions. Um, the uh, work in progress highlights that we as CCs were able to make give more attention to things that are potentially problematic than us just saying so in the discord um like stuff like the uh the, the, the slava for example the battleship that got more accurate at longer ranges and uh i i, I suspect that our our just our feedback straight to uh, Leicester would not quite have had the same impact if it hadn't also had videos and the kind of um, uh, public attention that was brought to it as well. So there's definitely that side to it also. If there are ships that come out that are, are more problematic in our eyes, we're not really going to get to say so publicly until rather later in the actual process. But even so, I think I overall am absolutely fine with it, as I've said, despite the potential downsides. I think the upsides kind of outweigh things because it it almost lets you come to things more with a clean slate. I mean, from my point of view, one of the reasons why I don't do videos looking at different versions of ships through um, the... the, the preview uh, process that we get to look at them in is because you end up chasing a moving target and you end up having to do multiple videos and inevitably, in, in, inevitably it's that first video you make that gets all the attention and then subsequent videos where you go okay this has changed and this has changed don't get quite so much attention so it goes back to what I was saying about that first impression really uh, counting and that kind of reputation then following a ship around even when it's no longer necessarily relevant. Izumo is in fact a pretty good tier 9 battleship these days and although I still find it kind of weird that Baji actually exists it too is a pretty good tier 9 premium. So these kind of things do matter and you can see why Wargaming has that thought of you know that they want the content made about stuff to more reflect what it's actually going to be like when it comes out live and aside from anything else you can also see where they're coming from in terms of uh, the the disproportionate amount of attention that new ships get but of course from the point of view of a streamer or youtuber and i can look at my own numbers and say that's what gets views a regular warships replay on my channel at the moment is maybe a thousand views whereas when I look at a new ship it might be two three even four thousand views so it's it's the new stuff that gets bums on seats as it were and you can see why wargaming is is eager for CCs to not forget about all the other content that's in the game but yeah purely from from uh, the point of view of uh, getting people to actually watch stuff, the, the numbers speak for themselves. You know, people clearly want to watch stuff about new ships over and above stuff about existing ships. And even someone like Jingles, who, you know, just on a, a regular replay that he does of not covering a new ship, I'm sure when those times he does cover new ships, he will notice. A significant difference. So um, that's I think that's about all I have to say about that uh, particular topic and even just to make you aware of it if you weren't aware already that that is going to change. Um, as for this itself this is going to be the uh, I think the alternative to the Moskva? I think so. They're shaking up the line a little bit. There's this and we've got a tier 8 to test as well. Or is it they're doing an alternate tier 10? I can't remember. I, my brain is fuzzy enough I'm <laughs> jumbling up words. I can't remember other things today. But um, yeah, it's 220mm gunned cruiser. It has all three turrets available to go 360 degrees fairly fast rate of fire the AP is good the HE is less good than you would think uh, and also um, yeah this this kind of amused me 
Uh, if you're going to give me a broadside uh, balance grad, then that's what's going to happen. Yeah, that would have been a far tougher fight otherwise. I went out of my way to go and engage that Stalingrad just because the thought of, you know, two tier 10 Soviet balance ships fighting each other was kind of amusing to me. But honestly, overall, I don't think this is that bad. I've been doing quite consistently decent in it, which means it's probably overperforming a bit. Given that I'm not the world's best player, and if I can be uh, doing consistently well in a ship, then it usually means it's uh, <laughs> going to be doing rather better in hands that aren't mine. But um, there are a lot of features that, frankly, it could keep with no problem. The, the turret rotation, for example, is fine. The, the HE is actually a lot less powerful than you would think for the caliber. And uh, that's absolutely fine. The 10 second radar is a bit weird, but honestly, it's more like a little burst of, you know, intelligence. It doesn't really serve much use in terms of being able to shoot at ships. The reload is fairly fast, but the, the reload is quicker, um, uh, longer rather, the opposite, I know what I mean, than the actual uh, uh, use of the, the radar without any mods. So, yeah. That game overall, though, that was a bit of a walkover. This, like I said, it was just background footage and the fact that I got to fight the Stalingrad and then they gave me all of that broadside. Yeah, it was quite nice. So, um, yeah, overall, this ship, I guess, I, I don't know what to say about it too much otherwise. I mean, it's the first version and the thing with uh, how it's been currently is that there's usually at least two rounds of testing and then there's the the um, stuff with all the, you know, containers and the, the, uh, the early versions that everyone gets to play with, like the EU DDs at the moment, so... Personally, I'm going to wait until this is much closer to completion to talk about this ship in any serious capability, but eh, it looks interesting so far, and I don't know if it'll be quite this good when it comes out, but even if it's only, you know, 80% as good, I have a feeling it will still be pretty decent. Anyway, so that's it for today's video. Hopefully you're all well in the current circumstances. I know at least I have a few viewers that will be uh, quarantined and isolated at the moment. Uh, and if you have enjoyed it, hopefully you can... Uh, the, the video, that is, not, <laughs> not the isolation. You know what I mean. If you have enjoyed the video, you can do all the usual things down underneath it. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.